Jean Alesi, the man who could have been king. He was on fire when he joined the Formula One grid back in 1989. He was still busy winning the Formula 3000 international title for Jordan. His first race was the French Grand Prix as a substitute when Tyrrell had to sack their driver for being sponsored by the wrong brand of cigarettes. That's a true story, one I will revisit in the future. Alesi's first GP was his home race bar. And while I totally don't understand the French, I mean completely, I do not understand this nationality. From the sulky and aggressive genius of Canton, to the sulky brilliance of Ginola and Zidane, in football to the sulky brilliance of Prost, to the light heartedness of UFC fighter Cyril Gahn, to their rugby team who can equally easily lose to Italy and beat the All Blacks. I do not understand the French. But the one thing I do get is that for a Frenchman, the French Grand Prix means a hell of a lot. So a lazy, making his debut while still technically as a Formula 3000 international driver, promptly finished fourth on debut. And that's impressive. Joining the team full-time in 1989, he managed to lead the United States Grand Prix for 25 laps. And as that beacon of reporting that can always be trusted without any fact-checking, Wikipedia puts it, and I quote, with a car powered by a customer Ford V8 considered as vastly inferior to the factory-developed Honda V10 in Senna's McLaren, and also repassing Senna after the Brazilian had first overtaken for the lead before ultimately finishing second. End quote. So Jean Alesi went head to head with a guy, any Formula One fan with an IQ higher than a squid or your average, I only watch drive to survive, not the race as smart as, considers one of the greatest ever as a rookie and came out smelling like roses. Well done. Another podium followed at Monaco, you know, before Monaco became an excruciatingly boring 78 lap parade when they still raced there. Not just followed whoever qualified in front of them. Anyways, everyone wanted the Frenchman now. He could have chosen between teams to join. He was seen as the man to take the reins from Prost as the main challenger to Ayrton Senna. So what went wrong? Well, the man had the worst timing of any driver possibly ever. Or maybe he had the worst luck. Or maybe both. I don't know if he peed off a reunion of the most angry gypsies ever to exist. Possibly ate the leprechaun's last cookie. But poor Jean Alesi never seemed to make the right choice again in his long Formula 1 career. He never seemed to have any luck either. In 1991, he could have joined Williams. They wanted him. There was talks, there was contracts signed, but Mr. decided to join his favorite team instead, Ferrari. Ferrari had to pay Williams four million pounds to be able to sign Jean Alesi. That's how highly he was rated. In 1991, that was a hell of a lot of money. Of course, the Ferrari wasn't near the pace set by McLaren that season. And at the end of 1991, Williams began showing remarkable pace. The pace that would win Nigel Mansell the 1992 title in complete dominance and of course Alesi could have been in that car but even in a slower car Alesi showed pace as Mark Andrews wrote in a very old Autosport article and I quote not even Senna could match these performances sometimes indeed a couple of races earlier at Barcelona in another wet race Alesi had gone on a charge after spinning early on with the rain beating down, Alesi went after Senna's McLaren and in the space of two laps had taken 14 seconds out of the Brazilian. Senna then aquaplaned and Alesi took third place with only Schumacher and Mansell in second and first places respective. End quote. That's high praise! As the song goes. Unfortunately, Alesi was not the guys that they were singing about. In 1993, he was joined by former McLaren man Gerhard Berger at Ferrari. And while the two of them were pretty evenly matched, Berger managed to win some races, while Alesi just could not pull out the win. He led the race in Portugal, but finished fourth, ending the season in sixth. In 1994, the car was quick, but it was kind of crappy, kept breaking. At Monza, Alesi led the race, until his gearbox gave out. Now 1995 came round and it was looking good. Yes, Berger was now seen as more of a team leader of the little horses team of pretty decent red cars. And Alesi finished second at Argentina and Imola. 
and retired in Spain and Monaco while also running Seca. Surely it was only a matter of time now before he finally got it right and won a race and possibly started challenging for the title we all thought was coming when he was dicing Senna in the wet. Canada 1995 Michael Maker of Shoes had technical issues and Alessi finally got that win. Schumacher would however win the title for Benetton. But and this was the good news for them. Berger and Alessi would be Benetton's drivers for the next season. So Alessi had the champion car. He had finally won his first GP and surely he had now made a good choice joining Benetton in 96. Uh -huh. Oh hell no! <laughs> Quoting Mark Andrews again. In his first season at the Italian-British team, Alessi finished on the podium eight times. But he also failed to finish five times. His second season opened with his infamous brain fade, where he ignored the need to pit and ran out of fueling. Yes, in a time when refueling was allowed, he ignored an order to refuel and ran out of fuel. I remember a local sports writer comparing Alessi's racing intelligence to a head filled with nothing but helium after that incident. I don't really agree with that, but that's what I read. In 1995, Schumacher won nine races in the Benetton. But the team lost not only Schumacher, but Braun and Berners, and Alessi and Berger managed to win zero in 1996. The 97 car was more reliable, but a lot slower. And come 1998, Alessi was off to Sauber with his reputation in debt. He did well at Sauber initially, even getting them on the podium in Belgium. Once more hopes were lifting and they were high for Alessi in 99. Sauber were running Ferrari engines. But it didn't work out. The car wasn't good, it wasn't reliable and Alessi was off again. He joined former Ferrari teammate and fellow Frenchman Alain Prost's team. The dream of a French super team called loudly, but it wasn't to be. Quoting Paul Murray from another Autosport article. And I quote, the APO3 was extremely unreliable, with the team making its way through 54 Peugeot V10 power plants, power plants during 2000, end quote. Hell's bells with sugar and pies on top. That must have cost a few euros or francs or jelly beans or whatever the hell currency you buy Peugeot engines in, eh? For the first time in his career, Alessi failed to score a single point in a season. But he was actually doing well. Again, I quote Murray. Despite such a torrid season, Alessi was better than ever. He put together probably the most spectacular qualifying lap of the year when he qualified 7th at Monaco in a car which turned out to be the worst on the grid, as Prost finished last behind Minardi in the Constructors' Championship. Other moments of inspiration included his charge from 17th to 9th in Canada and his rise to 4th for much of the Belgian Grand Prix following an inspired early change to slicks in a rain-affected event." End quote. In 2001, he finished every race he drove for Prost, but the car was rubbish and slow, and before long Alessi walked out on the team mid-season, swapping teams with Frentzen, if I remember correctly, and ending his career where he had started, driving for Eddie Jordan, but this time in Formula 1, not Formula 3000. In the end, poor reliability from cars, some dubious decision-making from Alessi and his career advisors and the odd piece of rotten luck would combine with that time that he ran out of fuel to limit a potential world champion to just one race win in 201 race starts. He also achieved 32 podiums. He finished second 16 times. That sums it up, doesn't it? Whether it was bad luck or a lack of that monster winning mentality the Hamiltons and Verstappens and Schumacher seem to have. I don't know. I always loved watching Alessi when I was a kid. He was one of my personal favorites and I remember cheering him on in front of the TV to his win in Canada in 1995. But it just never seemed to come together for the man that managed to match Senna with an inferior car back in 1990. Probably a bit of a waste of talent, yes. But he'll always have Canada 95. Well, that's my video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please subscribe. Because for every time someone watches and doesn't subscribe, a poor friend's child is forced to eat a snail. So please help stop this cruelty by subscribing to a channel that doesn't know any French children. And come back for more content, we have new stuff coming up a few times every week. God bless and goodbye.